In this video, I'm going to be going over 10 practice questions for the Security Plus, in particularly SYO 601. Now, you can also use these questions if you're studying for older Security Plus exams, such as 501. Okay, my name is Andrew Ramdial. I'm one of the instructors here at Technical Institute of America, where we do a lot of training for different CompTIA classes. And I'm also one of the trainers for the CompTIA classes, uh, CEH, CI, SSP, PMP, and so on. Let's go ahead and get started on these 10 questions. Okay, so first question up, practice question one. An organization has noticed that domain names are being translated to false IP addresses and malicious websites. Which of the following could the organization implement to mitigate this attack? A, LDAP-S, B, DNSSEC or DNSSEC, C, SSL, D, TLS. The answer here, hopefully you guys got this one, is going to be DNSSEC or DNS security extensions is what that is. So what that does is that it signs the DNS zone files so that way when people request uh, uh, queries from it to tell you, hey, what IP address is this domain name? We know it's actually coming from that particular zone file or that particular DNS server. You see, what could be happening in this attack is an attacker could be intercepting the traffic and sending them false IP address that they believe is coming from the actual DNS server. But if the DNS server digitally signs their zone files, then no one can impersonate that DNS server. Um, practice question number two. Which of the following security mechanism should a security administrator use in order to secure a site-to-site -site VPN? A. SMI. B. PGP, C, S, F, T, P, D, I, P, S, E, C. And the answer here is going to be, hopefully you guys got that, I, P, S, E, C. Now, first of all, if you studied well, you should know that I, P, S, E, C is really going to be using VPN tunnel, especially L2, T, P, VPNs uses I, P, S, E, C. When you enable I, P, S, E, C. Now, if you did the course with us, you know we did a lab with this where we did IPsec, I set up a VPN and I showed you how IPsec has, should be enabled. And when you do that IPsec, you want to make sure you configure ESP or because what ESP does encapsulating security payload, it actually does the encryption of the traffic. Practice question number three. An organization has noticed that some of the computers on the network only have antivirus software, software installed, while others have antivirus, anti-malware, and an IDS system. What can the organization implement to secure all, to ensure all computers have antivirus, anti-malware, IDS, and firewalls? A, HIPS, B, HIDS, C, host space firewalls, and D, endpoint protection. All right, guys, the answer here is going to be, hopefully you guys got this, is going to be endpoint protection. So endpoint protection software, like semantics endpoint protection, is what you're going to install on, on computers within your network to give you everything that is needed to have really secure your machine, such as firewalls, IDSs, and anti-malware software. Okay, practice question number four. An organization is using an encryption technology that will encrypt the entire hard drive of the computer. What does the, what does this encryption technology, I'm, I'm sorry, where does this uh, encryption technology generally store the encryption keys? A, certificates, B, trusted platform module, C, Hardware security module, D, hardware root of trust. And the answer here is going to be, did you guys get it? TPM, or the trusted platform module. So if you're doing hard drive-based encryption, you could be using a software like Microsoft BitLocker encryption. Microsoft BitLocker encryption will use something like a TPM chip to store the cryptographic keys to help do the hard drive encryption. Question number five, an organization has implemented a load balancer that allows servers connected to the load balancer to each receive an equal amount of requests. What kind of load balancer is this? A, active, passive, B, active, active, C, persistent, D, forward. Okay, what answer did you guys get? The answer here is gonna be active, active. So an active, active is generally done in a cluster where everyone in the everyone in that particular cluster uh, so the load balancer is going to say, I'm going to give you five, and I'm going to give you five, and I'm going to give you five. So everyone gets an equal amount of traffic. The other one is called an active passive. Active passive is basically where they send in traffic to one machine, and that one dies, then the other one kicks in. Question number six. An organization has implemented a wireless network and would like the authentication to be done by a centralized server using certificate. 
what, uh, which of the following solutions would meet this requirement? A. WPA2 pre-share key. B. PAP. C. CHAP. D. EAP. And the answer here is going to be, did you guys get this? Extensible Authentication Protocol, or EAP. Now, EAP utilizes a radius server. Now, the radius server is that centralized server that's going to allow you to do more authentication, such as using certificates or smart cards, in order to log in. You can use radius servers on VPNs. You can use them on wireless networks also. Remember in the class, we set one of those things up on a Windows server, and I showed you how easy it was to connect it to your access point. All right, that's good stuff. Practice question seven. An organization has provided a list of mobile devices that users can choose from when conducting work remotely. What kind of mobile deployment model is this? A, BYOD, C, C, O, B, E, C, C, Y, O, D, D, V, D, I. Hmm, a lot of acronyms there. And the answer here is going to be, did you guys get that? C, Y, O, D. Hopefully you guys didn't say B, Y, O, D. So B, Y, O, D is when you... Anyone can bring any device they want, any phone they want is join into the network. In CYOD, the organization is saying, well, we support these types of devices. They give you a list, and then you have to choose from that particular list. Practice question eight. An organization has implemented a VPN with password authentication protocol, or PAP. A security analyst has determined that this is not the best solution. Why would that be? A, PAP slows the connection. B, PAP sends a password in plain text. C, PAP requires dual-factor authentication. D, PAP is complex to configure. And the answer here, hopefully you guys got this. If you remember from your studies, I told you guys, and in the course, you know what? You don't want to use PAP because it sends a password in clear text. In fact, having PAP on a VPN, for example, it's like having an open VPN. Anyone sniffing the traffic can get your password, so you don't want that. Use CHAP if you want to use password at least. At least that'll encrypt the password. CHAP challenge handshake authentication protocol. If not, use EAP, which is better, so you can do like certificates or smart cards. Practice question number nine. An organization has noticed a newly installed VoIP network is having issues with the call quality. Calls are dropping and users are experiencing a lot of static in the background. What must the organization implement to mitigate this? A, QoS, B, VoIP monitoring, C, traffic monitoring, D, traffic prioritization. All right, if you have a VoIP network, you want to make sure that we, in, we implement a QoS because what QoS does is going to prioritize that network traffic. You don't want, you don't want to have uh, data and voice traffic contending for the same physical line. Because VoIP traffic, because it's based on UDP, it plays it as it's receiving it. So if you don't prioritize that traffic, you can have a lot of drop calls or static. Finally, question 10. A user has visited a popular online e-commerce site that is using SSL. How does the e-commerce site provide the public key to the user? A, email, B, certificate, C, uh, phone call, or D, password. And the answer here is going to be a certificate. So when you go to Amazon and you set up an SSL connection with Amazon, Amazon presents their certificates to you. If you remember when I taught cryptography, I showed you guys on that certificate as the Amazon's public key. And that brings me to an end on this one. Okay, guys, hopefully you guys enjoyed my 10 questions here really fast. Hopefully you guys learn a lot. And uh, hey, if you like my content, you like what we're putting out here, subscribe to our channel, give this video a like, leave in a comment what questions you felt was too hard or too easy or what type of questions you guys would like for me to add in the future. And with that, I'll see you in the next video.